Cool. Hey again. Well, please welcome to my session, which is called Excellent Groovy. And if you are here to get better in Groovy, you're in the wrong place because it's not about how to excel, how to be better in Groovy. It's how to write Excel files in Groovy. So my name is Vladimir Orani. I currently work in a company called Agora Pools as a test facilitator, which means basically I help my coworkers to write better tests, but this session will be about something a bit different. This is the URL where you can find all the documentation. It's spreadsheet.dsl.builders. I will post the link to the presentation later on Twitter, so you can you can take a look in there. So what do we do in AgoraPools? We do social media management. To, we have a social media management tool to manage Facebook, Twitter, a LinkedIn, YouTube for most mostly for social media agencies. So what's waiting for us today? First, we take a look on some ways how to actually avoid the Excel ge generation because it's such a pain. And as we see after that, it's how to do it with Apache Poi, which is the most commonly used library for writing Excel. And then there will be some live coding, so just pray to the demo codes. Everything will be OK to just export some basic table data, some advanced one and something which is close to, to let's say, reports, and then similar to Jasper reports. So not that way, but it will be more reports than just the birth data. And at the end, because the spreadsheet builder has its counterpart in spreadsheet criteria to read the Excel files, I will just have a quick, quick look at the spreadsheet criteria to read Excel files. So it's always difficult to find some common common data set to understand, everyone understand what kind of data we are having. So as we are doing the social media management, and Twitter is probably well known to everyone here, I guess there's no one who don't know what Twitter is. So it's very basic data data model. It's a status, uh, user post a status, there are some engagements, which means that there are favorites and there are retweets. And that's it. So it's it's really really simple, simple data model. And this is what we do in for a living. So, you know, just imagine you're a developer in a small company, and you have this tool. Let's say even it's our tool to manage social media. And one day, your boss came in and say, "Hey, Vlad." We have a problem, you know. Our clients are asking more and more often to have an Excel export of, of the data they're having in our application. Oh, so what do you do? Can you, can you do an Excel export? Uh, of course I can do. Well, there are definitely some Java libraries for it. Okay, so I can do Excel export from our library. Cool. So, what do you do if you if you don't know how to what to do stuff, how to do stuff in in software development? So you probably just Google it, and most often you end up on Stack Overflow. So you just search on the Stack Overflow or whatever how to export files in Java to, to uh, how to export in in Java to Excel. So there is one way how to do it. Who's doing? Who's actually doing this? Is doing a CSV export just because user ask for Excel. Ah, yeah, you're my guys. I always want to do it as well. Ah, okay, yeah, but you know, it's... So you just give to your boss and say, okay, well, you know, maybe we don't need an Excel export, do we? What, we, what if we do CSV export instead? It's basically the same. It's a, date, it's a table data. And he said, okay. But you know the other tool, it, it also has an X CSV export. And it always exports with semicolon instead of comma. And it won't open Excel. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. And the encoding is problem as well. Ah, oh, OK, OK, maybe. So is there any other way? Well, the other way is that you can also use, instead of comma separated values, you can use a top separate value file which is also great, and you don't have to write, use any library, just you know, dump a plain text file 
with the, with the top separate, separated values. And that's it, you just add the .xls extension and Excel can open it somehow. Okay, so maybe it would work. But then the boss just tell you, okay, but there is one more thing. So they want to highlight some, some rows in a color. Can you do it as well? Uh, I guess you can't do it with top separated file. Okay, so you have to figure out something else. And one of the favorite actually is to write an HTML table and save it as an Excel file with, a, with an Excel as extension. This actually works. So you can just write an HTML table file and open it as an Excel file. Okay, great. You don't have to use any special libraries. You can use your favorite uh, markup builder and build the, build the HTML file. But there is a one bad thing in the company happening, and it's called code reviews. So if you do it, there will be some nasty coworker and saying, but this doesn't look like an Excel file you're using Markup Builder. Are you sure it's an Excel file? Yeah, yeah, sure, it is. It is. Okay, so what to do? So basically, the, there are two libraries, as far as I know, which one is uh, Apache Poi and the second one is Jexcel, which are basically most commonly used libraries to to export, uh, to write Excel files in Java. Okay, so what do we have here? Just have to take a look. So, great, so what, what is this doing? Can anyone tell me what is this doing? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so obvious because you, can you create an Excel file with one sheet? Okay, the one row, uh, one cell, values now okay and the other cell this is not it uh, okay so uh, cell number three four five okay so I think it's a it's a sheet with a one row and five cells and it only takes like I don't know 60 rows yeah and actually I just yesterday when I just running this again I just figured out okay this just tells you something about the people using this just download the jar library. Don't use Maven, don't use Gradle. Just download it somewhere. Anyway. Okay, so how's how's thing doing with Poi? Okay, it's a super, it's so nice library, it can do anything you want. It's just a bit messy. Well, it's not that bad if you just use Groovy for it. So Groovy is awesome in every situation. I hope. So it's it's you know, it's basically the same, so it just Write the four, four headlines and four cells. Okay, so it's a, use a screen name, that's a Twitter handle, favorite count, retweet count, and the text of the tweet. So it's not that bad, but I think it can do better. So, so I'll just do some live coding. I'll just write some really, really basic table data which will just export the headlines and the status for each row. So I have the class ready in here. And I have a note because I forgot everything, including what I had for breakfast. Cool. So, so this is the very basic example. So just export tweets to Excel. So we have currently, there's only one implementation of the builder which is based on Apache Poi. It still uses Apache Poi underneath. It just gives it a nice DSL. Uh, create, out. So it will write to the output stream. And I just want to create a sheet. Just the word of pronunciation. So it's a sheet. Okay, tweets. Uh, no, great. What's happening? Demo codes are here. Oh, see. Great. Oh, sorry, I'm built. I'm missing a call. So, 
sheet with the name and let's say there will be a row with some cell so it's a user favorites retweets and the text so that's the basic and let's say for each tweet just create new row with some value so it's the tweet status it's tweet user screen name is the Twitter handle um, next is favorite count retweets count and the text okay fingers crossed So it, I'm running the test, which is, it's backed by test. So let's run it. Something's opening. Yeah, that's my family. Cool. And it's done. Okay, so everyone should be happy now, you know. You can call your boss and okay yeah it was super it was super oh, oh thanks <laughs> yeah I'm glad you appreciate it yeah but after a while the client just started to complain you know every time every time I open the ex download the Excel file I just have to go here and I have to move this to see all the names and I can't you know I have to scroll 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 like hell down there. Can you improve it somewhere, somehow? Well, yeah, I hope it, I can improve it. Right, this is complaining a bit. I don't know why. Okay, it's always the demo code size rows, sheet tweets. Okay, I just have to name anyway so let's move forward so, so there's another method so users are not very happy because actually what we've seen this is quite the similar as you do to CSV export it doesn't add any value in there so let's do something something more so I have also my bit of cheat sheet here so okay with the handle user number of favorites and retweets and the text so for this I can just reuse it's called reuse it's not called copy pasting because it <laughs> <laughs> okay so okay so for so how to how to freeze something so freeze freeze zero column and one row at the beginning and what's next uh, freeze filter okay there should be a filter is it the yeah, automatic filter so filter auto okay automatic filter here we go and it's readable without horizontal scrolling. Okay, so this could be a problem. And you can easily see the tweet as retweet or urgent tweet. So let's say I also add the day is retweet. So let's say there's a retweet status, which if it's retweeted, so if it's there, it's yes. No. Okay, so this is still the same. Ah, uh, what's this? Tweets containing the given text are highlighted. Alright, so we have the search text, 
and you want to highlight it. So what's what we can do in Builder and Spreadsheet Builder because it's more efficient and actually it's important if you export many, many rows. Imagine 64,000 of rows. Just to reuse the styles. So just define a style. That's no spelling highlighted. I can't even write highlighted. Okay, here we go. And I'd say, okay, we want to highlight it in orange. So which means actually it's a bit tricky because it's a foreground color. Just say foreground orange. And it's highlighted. And we need some. We need to do something with the with this one, because you know it's too long. It should wrap at least somehow. So let's say style for text, and we should wrap the line. So let's say wrap the text, and that's all for now. But we have to apply it. So this is pretty simple. We can the style can be applied to whole row. So if the tweet text contains a search, if we should highlight this, just apply the style. And for the text, we can also just have some additional configuration of this for the cell. Apply the style text. And we'll see. Mm. A bit better. Not ideal. Yeah, but it's highlighted. So what we can do, actually we can do... Make the headline. Font star bold, so it's more visible and star headline. Yeah, this is bad. Okay, so so put it some automatic width. But this one, it needs to have a text wrap. So let's say it's eight centimeters width. Okay. Oh, that's the old one. But now, yeah. I think this is something which can, which is quite usable. Drink is use okay. Yes, you know it's it's frozen up there. And it's highlighted here. Cool. So this is something which can be, you know, like you can I think happily ship to your to your client, to your customers. So this was it, spreadsheet builder, table data, advanced. You can easily you can easily filter and scroll. You can apply styles and you get something which looks a bit nicer. Okay, unit testing. So maybe you wonder how do I test this? So this is already part of the spreadsheet criteria. And what I can actually say is that I just grab the the generated file, create the spreadsheet criteria instance, and I just can, for example, query for a sheet with the name tweets, get the, the all the rows and their size, so I know it will be the headline and number of tweets. I can, for example, query for a sheet, any sheet, any row, any cell, 
with a style font bold. So you can basically query for every every bold cell in the in the sheet, and it's five. It's the headline. You can query by value, so you can get all cells with the name yes, with the value yes, and you can get all all cells or this in this time you can get the rows which has the orange foreground so that's actually the one one reason I've created the the spreadsheet criteria as well so I can easily test the result because otherwise it's always like okay let's generate it check it by by eyes and run it again so uh, so this was all kind of report kind of um, uh, table data, so it was just a grid. But time to time, you just want to do some kind of print reports. Let's call it print reports. It's not a table of structure. So let's take a look. <clears throat> I get my cheat sheet over there. So then your boss come here and tell you, okay, I want to print all the tweets. I want to print the top tweets with the most engagement, which means the sum of the uh, favorites and the tweets count. And just, you know, give me give me this content. I need the name, the handle, the number of favorites and the tweets, created date, and the text of the tweet. And I want to print it as a A4. It needs to be invisible, which is a tweet. Sort it, and I'm not sure about this one. I think this is, I don't want it. <laughs> okay, so I can't reuse this anymore, or most of it. So let's do something which is not that related to this. So to easily sort it, we can just implement and okay. let me just update another method which is in count which is the retweet count plus the Favorite count. Turn. Okay, so let's make a spaceship. Engagement count, spaceship. Uh, engagement counts. Okay, cool. So this will sort by default by the number of engagements. So, so we need a sheet, but this has to go. So if our tweets, we search them, uh, return the new one. This means it's, it returns the new one instead of trying to mutate the original one. Sort reverse means the most like the most like main engage at the at the top. And let's start. So because you want to have some nice layout for it, I just created. I just prepared some layout for it. So let's copy this over. So let's say the text is the biggest part of the, of the kind of area of the single tweet in the report. Then we have quite big favorite count, red tweet count, the name, the handle, the Twitter handle, and the creation date. So, so for each tweet, you're going to print these cells with the proper spans. So, okay, each status tweet. So we create a row and the first one is name, so cell is the value tweet name, 
with the username and it should have a should have a row span of two. Then there is a cell with the text with a row span of four. One, two, three, four. And the last one is cell value tweet and its favorite count is just as a row span of two again. Okay, so we can actually leave a blank row in here, so let's just do a blank row. And we continue to the next one, which is a Twitter handle. So let's say the next one is is uh, cell with a value of three. Use a screen name, which is the handle. And now we have to skip, skip to this one. So. going to be the retweet count. It's still the row span 2. But we need to put it in the cell, in the column C. So you can address cells, you can address rows by numbers, or you can address cells by by the by the letters. And the last thing is the creation date. So for the last row, let's just put there the creation date. Okay, so let's move a bit to the next test. It fails. Hmm. Oh, mutate false. I don't want to mutate it. Okay. I guess we get the layout quite well. Just need to play a bit with the this and so on and the alignment. But what's this? This is the date. So you know, so by default dates are numbers in Excel. It's probably the thing we should start with. So we need a couple of styles. Let's say for date. And we need to assign a format which is pretty trivial. Aside to eight and I like to have the stuff centered. So let's say align center, but the text should be. Should be aligned to center and justify and wrap the text. State. Hmm. So this should work to apply the center to the whole, whole row. Hopefully. Name text text and this is the date. So let you a bit step ahead. Yeah, there.
here's the date. And it's centered, it's aligned, and so on. So it gets better. Now to just separate the tweets, so I just put an extra row at the, at the end. And maybe we can do some borders, I guess. So sadly there is no silver bullet for borders. I can, but you can declare borders this way, for example, for top border, for bottom one, and so on. And you can combine the styles, so for example, this is the left, word left, and styles. bottom, this is top and right, this is this uh, tweet user screen name is just the left, and this one is um, bottom, now this is bottom this one is left and bottom okay the other thing is just we should probably change the change the vase a bit so let's say this is the in the first one is say four centimeters the other one is the biggest one let's say eight centimeters and the last one let's say just the two you can do inches you can do points which is the basic unit which is basically nonsense and the inches, the ten centimeters are kind of approximation because the computation is pretty complex. Okay. okay. And one last thing we can do is we can do a link. So usually from the Twitter handle, let's say. Play the, the Twitter handle and say link to URL screen name. So this is this is getting closer to something useful, I guess. This is a bit broken, I guess. It's text. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Needs to be. Just a single call, I guess. And if I click to poll, I can get poll tweet. We can, you know, change the style so it looks more like a link, but it works. Yeah. And what we're missing is the We need uh, if we take a look there was one export to 
A4 portrait page. So just say the page, paper A4, orientation portrait. That's all. That will basically look the same. So if I go print, still just, you know, it's not ideal. There should be some print margins which are not there yet. Cool. Okay, so just pull through my slides. Here we go. Okay, so as you can see, the spans can be created pretty easily. You can set the dimension in a useful unit. You can set the page. You can format the date. You can set the borders. This is kind of if you if you play bit more, a couple of more minutes visit, this could be the result. <coughs> so the last thing is reading extra. So sometimes your bosses, your clients will ask for it crazy. Impossible to, to reflect the keynote today. So yeah, so one of the impossible tasks could be just we are sending you this order in an Excel file. Can you just parse the the products and the, their quantities from it? Okay, well, yeah, you can probably do it. It shouldn't be a big problem. So how would you do it as a human, as a kind of AI? So you would go there, you take a look, you find the row, the Excel is a headline product. You find a service, the headline quantity, and just read it down there until you reach the total, which is no longer a product line. So, so this is a simple, simple test you can see now. Just this, this is the result. Motorcycles. 44 and so on so this is how should it end up and now we should implement it so you've seen a bit of a spreadsheet criteria in a test so there's also so far just a single implementation so this is how you create a criteria for an input stream or for a file you can do it as well so what do we want to identify? So we want to get this product. So what do we now say? Sell product. Product headline sell is the one. So I don't care about, care about the sheet at all. Now the row. Nor the cell, but the value should be products, product, and let's say font should be bold. Okay, so. Well, it's, it's better because, you know, there could be, you don't have to, but you can. Because you, you're, you know that the products are not, not bold, so if you want to just select the headline, it's better just to say it, say it's bold. So, but this returns many things. It's actually iterable of cells or list of cells. It's iterable, but you can get just a single cell. So I'm just going to reuse this stuff and search for the quantity, which is basically the same, but it says quantity, Q-T-Y. So we have this one, that one, and we won't have to total row. Let's 
throw what we want. Just return me the row. Okay, this one, but it would fail because you may notice there's two total. There's a one, and there's the second one. So you want the one in the column A. So let's say cell is A in the column A. And you can do other crazy stuff with, for example, having. I won't show you. And you can you can basically match whatever you want, but that's it. So you have a product headline cell, quantity headline cell, total row. So now what? So let's begin somewhere. So let's say the the first product cell is the one below the product headline cell. The quantity cell is the one below. Wanted headline cell. And we don't have a do while yet. So while there's some product cell and product cell dot row num. And so we don't want to reach the total row. So we only iterate until we reach the total row. So quantities and product cell. Let's read a string. Assign what's in the quantity. Read. And it's pretty tricky. It's usually a double, but let's stick with the number to integer. That's a nice way how to create an infinite loop. But we don't want to have an infinite loop. So we just go down from the quantity cell below and the one below the current product cell is the next product cell. And I believe that's it. Passes. So this is the way how you can read kind of complex complex uh, Excel files, which has kind of semantics, code, and in a styles and other stuff. Yeah, that's what we done. Okay, so is this the end? Well, it could be, you know, but you know users, they always want more features. So, okay, so can you, uh, okay, so can you fix it? Can you add another feature? Well, there are a couple of more features which didn't fit in this, this slides. So you can do, for example, grouping. I'm not sure if you are aware of grouping in Excel, so you can group cells and rows, columns and rows. You can protect sheets, so this is this is kind of you know dump protection, but just for ex accidental changes by the end user, you can just protect them. Well, they can still open it in a, using the archive utility and change the XML, but they won't do it voluntarily. You can paste in the pictures, but pictures are a bit of bees because they have to have the proper size. You can add comments which is also one of the proper way how to kind of add a metadata or some semantics into the Excel files. You can have a named cells and you can reference the named cells within the within formulas in the, in the generating code, which, is, which could be pretty handy. There is different kind of borders. You can actually have a rich text inside single cell, so you don't have to, you know, just have some different styles for uh, for different cells, but you can within one cell you can do you can do rich text. You can rotate text for some reason I don't know why, and that's really all. Oh, thank you. So any questions? I'm happy to answer any question. Sure.
tabs. How do you mean it? Like different sheets or within the same document? Or you can just put any any number of uh, sheet calls in here. So you see. There's no shortcut to the row. Cell. Hello. And. <coughs> so you should create two, two different sheets in there. We'll see. Hello, great con. Hello. Cool. Any other question? Sure. Not yet. If anyone is a Google fan, I will be happy if someone helped me to implement it, but it's currently just for Excel. It's it's quite a common question, I know, but the problem is I don't have a use case and I don't have a bandwidth to, to implement it. So you mean like if you can access the the underlying let's say XSSL sheet or something like that directly. The underlying POI structure. Well, the main fun I try to do the main functionality. Maybe there are some corner cases which are not covered. But the most of it, most useful, I've tried to implement. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, in that case, thank you.